Our Lord, we come to you today to celebrate at this Christ Mass, the gift of your Son, the gift that has brought hope to the world, and it's to him that we look as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Merry Christmas. I am so glad that we have an opportunity in the midst of all of this to still join together as a church family. I want to start out by asking you a question. Have you ever got to the time where, you know, you're giving and receiving gifts and someone gives you a gift and they're like really excited about this gift that they're going to give you and then you open up the gift, you know, you're matching their excitement with your excitement and as you open up the gift, it's this thing that you're like, hey, thank you, thank you for this, this gift that I didn't ask for and it's awesome, thank you very much. Well. Our first 20 Christmases together with Lisa and I, that was essentially our experience because initially at least, I was the world's worst gift giver. On one of our early times where we were exchanging gifts, I just remember, uh, this was back in the day, forget cell phones, um, you spoke on a phone that had a long cord and she said all year long what a great gift it would be uh, to actually have a cordless phone. So I gave her a cordless phone for Christmas, and I'll never forget her expression. It was like, hey, thanks, a phone. And I was like, what? And she was like, well, I was, I was you know, kind of hoping for something a little more heartfelt than a, uh, a household uh, item. And uh, that was a step up, however, from the year um, that uh, I gave her sneakers uh, for, uh, for a gift. And uh, so I started taking these cues and then I realized I needed to really up my game. So uh, one anniversary, I got her a vacuum cleaner. Uh, that didn't go over really well. So eventually, at one point, I realized I've got this thing nailed. Um, I started listening to her talk all throughout the year. I'm like, I'm going to listen for what she really wants. And uh, she had been mentioning all year long that she couldn't lose that extra 5 to 10 pounds of pregnancy weight. And let me just pause and just say this to, to the men that are listening. Do not do what I did. Uh, because what I did is I mentioned, hey, I've been listening to what you've been saying all year, and you can't lose that pregnancy weight. And so I rolled in a treadmill. Do not do that. This is, if you get nothing out of this message, do not do that. Uh, the only thing that would be comparable to would be uh, to be in Bethlehem, in Judea, and you would be out on the countryside and angels breaking through the sky and these angels are yelling to you that they're going to give a gift. And you're, you're, you're standing there and you're like, what is this amazing gift that you're going to bring? And it's glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. In other words, I'm going to give you peace. And God's like, what do you mean? You don't like it? You're like, no, seriously, this is great. This is exact. Actually, no, that's not at all what I wanted. If you're going to ask me what I want, here's what I want. I want to get rid of the Romans in my country so we can control our own destiny. I want to change the tax system because if you haven't noticed, we're all paying up to 60% of our income to the government, to the temple tax, and these unfair arrangements that we have for using land. And by the way, hey, it would be nice we're all dead by the time we're 40 years old because of disease and malnutrition. Those would be the gifts, but hey, peace, hey, that's great. Well, have you ever had a gift given to you and um, later on you realize that this gift is actually pretty cool? You know, let's be honest. At Christmas, Christmas, if it's amazing, if we can just be very candid, it's because of all of the stuff we do for one another and all the stuff that we do with one another. To be completely honest, it's like Jesus and, and, and all of that is a side note. Yeah, he's sort of like the veneer of the whole thing, but what makes it meaningful, what makes that, that spirit of Christmas come alive is what we do with one another. We decorate, we repeat these traditions, we create new traditions, we give each other's gifts, and without realizing it, the gift of peace, the whole reason for Christmas 
It's sort of like that gift that you open up that you don't really like, and then as you're unwrapping gifts, it sort of gets tucked away between the cushions on the couch, and when you go to like pick up your gifts and, and, and take them away, you're like, oh, where did that go? Oh, here it is, and, and you pull it out. Without realizing that this gift that was given 2,000 years ago, man, this is the gift that we need right now. 2020. It's like we've been crawling on our hands and knees through the shadows of our life. Many of you have lost work. Many of you have lost a whole school year, even almost a half we're going into it. You know, like a time that you were really looking forward to and you've been on Zoom calls. We've lost much of our church community. We've tried to make up with Zoom and all these other things, but uh, Lisa, my wife, was here on Saturday handing out Christmas at home kits for you to celebrate tonight. And I'm very thankful for all of the volunteers and staff that put those together. But she was just in line greeting people and praying for one another. And when she came home, she said, hey, so I think sometimes we lose sight of the fact of how meaningful Christmas, it, Christmas Eve is at CCV. She said uh, one, one um, woman came through the line and she talked to her and prayed with her. And the woman said, I don't want to have any family in this area. This is my family. And so when we think of Christmas, this is our Christmas. And yeah, we're doing it virtually this year, but it's hard. You know what? We've lost personal connection. We've lost our bearings at times. Many of you have lost loved ones. And it's at a time like this, we need to take that unappreciated gift, pull it out of the seat cushions, and look at it for the amazing gift that it actually is. When the angel announced, peace to those on whom his favor rests, they were speaking prophetically about something that Jesus was going to teach us. Jesus said in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. See, when we think of peace, we automatically think of the end of war. Like, we, we want peace, right? We want to end conflict. And that's not at all what Jesus was talking about. That's not at all the gift that the angels promised. The peace Jesus gives is not from this world. The world didn't give it to you, and the world can't take it away. And so what is this peace? Well, first saying, I'm at peace, doesn't mean you have the peace that Jesus is talking about. You know, a lot, of, a lot of us, when we hit a nice stretch of things going well, it, it would be a time where we feel like, hey, uh, grab a glass of wine. I don't drink wine, but if you grab a glass of wine and sit down and kick your feet up and, and just relax because, man, we finally hit a good stretch and things are going well. I'm sort of at peace with my life. And that's not at all what Jesus is talking about. All that is is the absence of the adrenaline hype that we feel in our bodies when we're going from one conflict to another, and we finally have a time sort of to rest. That's nice when that happens, but that's, no, that's not what is being described at Christmas. Jesus is talking about the kind of peace where you can be at peace in the midst of disease ravaging your body. You can be at peace in the midst of pain. You can be at peace in the midst of a pandemic. You can be at peace when you have a bunch of gifts that you ordered online and the post office website says in transit and you're still waiting for them to get to your doorstep so you don't have to wrap pictures of the gifts that you want to give to your family members on Christmas morning, hypothetically, of course. You can be at peace at any time and in any situation because it's a peace that's not from this world. The world didn't give it to you and the circumstances that happen in life, the world can't take it away. When I was in seventh grade, there was a gang on the other side of town that started making inroads into our quiet little suburb. It started with vandalism, and then it went to painting and, 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 and breaking into cars, and then eventually turned into breaking and entering homes and eventually killing people. So it was frightening. And I remember when I was in seventh grade, I was at a football game on a Friday night, and a gang of like, it was upwards of about 30 people surrounded me and just pummeled me, just pummeled me. I dislocated my shoulder. I still feel it every time I yawn or eat. I shook for days. 
I remember the day that we went into the courtroom and there were people and lawyers and the people that had hurt me. And I felt this sense of peace. It was the strangest thing. As I was walking in there and I was looking at these people, I felt this sense of peace because my dad was standing next to me, because he was with me. In the Bible, we see the Apostle Paul using over and over again this phrase, grace and peace. Grace and peace. It was like he uses it everywhere, constantly. Grace means that there's nothing we can do to be forgiven of our sins. It's a gift that Jesus earned on the cross that allows us to start fresh with God. And being at peace with God is the result of that happening. Grace and peace, grace and peace. So he opens up his letters. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. In the middle of his letters, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And then when he ends his letters, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. And it's like Paul is saying, you need to get this. You need to get, this is the gospel. This is why Jesus came, was born and eventually died. This is the gospel. Our sins have separated us from God. The Bible tells us that we're enemies with God at that point because of our sin. And when we place our faith and trust in Jesus, we believe, we repent, and we're baptized. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Where before he was an enemy, sort of like that dad that you hear from once a year that will send you a, a, a birthday card, he's useless, Right? He, the, the relationship that you have with God now goes from being an estranged relationship to him being with you and walking with you. Once we give our lives to Jesus, the Bible says he's with us, and this changes everything. The religion that is hollow and means nothing is, I messed up. My dad is going to kill me. But the gospel, the gift that's brought to us at Christmas says, I messed up. I need to call my dad. That's radically different. That's real peace. And so let me be very, very clear. For those of you who are watching, and if you've not taken the step yet to make Jesus your leader and forgiver and to become a disciple of Jesus, the peace that you experience at times is manufactured. It's given to you by the world, and the world can take it away. You don't have peace with God yet. And that's why we're here. That's why you're here. We want to help you have peace with God finally. And that peace changes everything. If you're here, if a friend invited you to come and be at church with us, I want to encourage you to download our church app, look up CCV Philadelphia in the app store, and there's a little tab that says get baptized. I want you right now to open that up and I want you to click that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna contact you and we're gonna walk you through what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. And more importantly, we're gonna be your new family. We're gonna be this new community for you. And we're gonna walk beside you in the hard times, feeling the love and the peace and the community that we have from one another. But for those of you who are Christians, those of us who are disciples of Jesus, celebrating at this mass, the presence and the gift of Christ. Let what the Apostle Paul said speak to us. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Right now, drown out all of the things that are going in our world. Drown out all of the problems, all of the anxiety, all of the pain. Let it all be drowned out as we let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, since as members of one body, we were called to peace and be thankful. And so we are thankful. The gift that was given at Christmas, the greatest gift of all, the incredible thing that was given and made possible to every single person on this planet, given on that night, is the gift of peace. Our Father, thank you so much for not giving us what we deserved, but giving us what we needed. Peace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Thanks for watching today's message. Make sure to check out Brian's new book, Finding Favor, God's Blessings Beyond Health, Wealth, and Happiness. To sign up for Brian's newsletter, please go to Brian's website at brianjones.com.